I changed from Amsterdam to Saturday now because um, I would like to talk about not um, enterprise but sorry um, I prefer to talk about something that we are already doing, which is um, we are studying the relationship between citizens and governments and how governments are already taking advantage of the current technologies that we already have. And so I think one of the, this is one of the richness of this project that we can have very diverse dialogues and in, in very different approaches, different methodologies. So that's we, that's why we are so happy to contribute in this in this initiative. Okay, I'll give one thing. So, um, networks of collaboration, network of citizens. So we have been talking about citizens like students at the very early morning and then as consumers. So, um, why don't we stop for a while and think in citizens like those who are facing this idea of user-generated content and prosumers, people who, who are able to create ideas, people who are able to, to, to uh, pursue innovation, people who are able to create things farther than what we already have. Um, but uh, also in the morning we, we talk about the education, which is an environment that talks a lot about innovation, but you know, it's not always a flexible area of the society. But in government, with government happens something quite similar, which is uh, governments are not really the most innovative part of the society, but they depend a lot on the use of the technology. So, uh, based on those assumptions and based on this idea of uh, that we're going to be interested to explore how governments are already adopting the technology to take advantage of this, um, these ideas that are spread in the citizens, we design our, our research. So, let me, let me ask um, as a first question how many of you don't have a Facebook account? Two, three. Okay, that's nice. I'm proud of you. I guess that now you, have, you, you need a good reason to be sure that why you don't want to be in Facebook. Um, nowadays we have like 600 million of users. People say that this is the third biggest continent in the world. But rather than the number, uh, what struck me is that in the last winter of the last year, sorry, in the last weekend, of the last year, when it was Christmas time and the, the last uh, the celebration of the change of the e New Year's Day and these sort of things, 750 million pictures were uploaded on Facebook. Very much the number of pictures that we have done. This in one weekend, because we were all uploading all the pictures that we made in this uh, party time. Uh, so, Obviously, there are huge potentialities for in terms of uh, market, but also there's a lot of wisdom, a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity spread all around. So the question would be, how do we take advantage of that? So my next question would be, how many of you have a Facebook, uh, Twitter account? We don't need audio. Twitter. You are on Facebook, but you have Twitter. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. I mean, how many of you have already Twitter account? Ah. Okay, it's like one third. Um, it is okay. This is just an o oh. This is just an overview of how uh, Twitter works in one day in the world. These are all the retweets and connections that we create. So um, again. It would be interesting to see how governments are taking advantage of this massive amount of knowledge. Um, because we, when we think about this relationship between government and citizens, <coughs> from my perspective, most of the energy has been uh, spent on improving the, the services. I mean, the government in the traditional way that you can pay your taxes and these sort of things using the internet. 
But government listening to people is not something that is always present. This, that was the, the premise that support our idea to go and see what was going on there. So, as you know well, this week has been a very shaky week, a very um, bloody, unfortunately, week in Egypt, but previous days in Tunis. Uh, so these poor uh, guys are having a very bad time. Uh, this picture is from two days ago, I guess, New York Times. So it could be interesting again, not just from the European perspective, but uh, now that we are in this weekly time, to think how citizens are taking attention of that. So um, I'm bringing the, the Egypt example because what stri strikes me is that the government of Egypt decide to, this is another information from the New York Times, suddenly, for some reason, or somehow, uh, citizens who are not allowed to access their Facebook account and their Twitter accounts. Because governments, this is an hypothesis, understood that people are using those technologies to organize themselves. So people are not just using Twitter to buy, but people are using Twitter also to say when they are not happy with something to organize themselves. So this is an amazing example of censorship, or in other words, an amazing example of bad use of the technology. A bad case, we always talk about best, ca best practices in Kenya, but this is a worse practice, I was saying. But I'm sure that citizens will find a way to, to avoid this, this, this band uh, and access to, to the information that they want. So, obviously there are certain uh, exceptions, but um, in general terms, most of the time, the internet, or the use of the internet in relation with the citizens is highly being used to have control of the data that we produce and these sort of things, but with a very, very top-down approach, uh, in order that, uh, in, in a way that citizens <coughs> are not having this position to take advantage of the technology that like we saw in Wikileaks, that could be very, very dangerous if all, if all the citizens in different countries take advantage of this idea and they start producing their own lot of Wikileaks. Of course, uh, we are all aware of how Obama was very successful uh, using the technologies. So they opened a lot of ears, digital ears, to create kind of communication and traffic you know, <coughs> with the iPod and these sort of things. Uh, iPod applications, I mean, and these sort of things. But interestingly, Obama was very successful in the campaign using the technologies during his uh, administration, it's not that clear they've been uh, that successful. They, they promote, obviously, the open data, the, previous, or the, uh, the open data department, which has been very interesting. But the citizens, they were very empowered during the campaign. But after that, after they got the power, in some ways they don't, I don't know if it was that they forgot, they forgot the citizens, or they had other problems to face, or maybe that and um, much more complex. But just summarize in a very uh, simple approach, because we don't have too much time, has been very clear that this top-down perspective of citizens and governments, and now that we are in these weekly times, in this Facebook time, where people are more and more in power and more and more um, is killed digital, with digital competence, that now we know, we are aware of some grandmas that already have their place for town and these sort of Some of these things is quite So, this is a quite old approach. This is an IBM approach of the year 2004, which is a diagram that across two dimensions, the levels of engagement and the levels of influence. So, um, this model organized the way that governments use the communication, uh, the way that governments communicate with citizenships in four dimensions. This is the easiest one, the simplest one, the one way, which is have a website, like a brochure or a PDF, or something that is not interactive at all. <coughs> which is not very high in influence, but high in levels of engagement, a bit higher. When the citizens have the possibility to, for example, send an email or fulfill a, a survey of, of this sort with a higher level of engagement, but also higher level of influence, we have this one, which is 
moving forward this idea of, to have more collaborative approaches. Uh, and I have some examples here, but I'm afraid I won't be able to, to present them because we are very tight in time. And the final one, which is an idea, but is definitely more complicated to do, but we already have the technology to do that, is to move toward this idea to have a sort of high levels of engagement and high levels of influence of citizens. Right? I'm saying that it's more an idea than a current reality, because it's not that clear that all governments are doing, for example, what the experiment that Obama is doing here, which is Obama in this, in this interview is trying to answer hundred and hundred of questions that citizens upload using YouTube. So, all the citizens, this is during the administration, not the campaign. Uh, hundred and hundred, I would say hundred of thousands of citizens have now proposed questions to the government saying like, when you ask me to vote for you, you promised these sort of things and now you have to tell me if you fulfill it or not. So they organize some of these of this, uh, questions and they select some of them and he is giving some insights. So it's a very interesting example of moving forward this idea to open a spaces of communication. The problem of, the, of that experience is that Obama was able to answer something like the 0.0001% of all the press, uh, questions. Yes. You wouldn't be able to have uh, a presidential activity if you would spend all the time just um, answering questions. Okay, but anyway, based on this <coughs> normal uh, quadrant, a more engaged one, with higher levels of influence, we, uh, based on a previous work developed by Bill Datum, which is the director of the OIA, uh, we build this scale of improvements in terms of citizen participation, <coughs> citizen engagement, and uh, the possibility that citizens are not just consumers, are not just the guys who pay the taxes, but those who can provide ideas. Why, if the government is the company, sorry, can provide ideas through crowdsourcing, like Innocentive and other ones that collect good ideas from people, why do governments try to do that? Moving from the one to many, which is just posting a website, to many to many, which is Facebook, to this idea that many people can provide ideas, how something would be done in a better way. Obviously, this means from just sharing information, which is the internet 1.0, let's say in that way, to create platforms, to this idea that is co-creation. Obviously, not everything can be co-created with people. There are some matters that are more complicated, but some of them could be Openly discussed. We just hope to finish, don't get stressed. Uh, so, what we did was in um, 2009, the, a group of experts they organized this uh, uh, e government award and they chose the best websites of Europe uh, based on uh, citizens' uh, votes, but also based on a very complex and, uh, matrix analysis provided by the European Commission. So they identified the best e-government websites spread all around Europe. All of them were providing service to citizens in different ways. Some of them just for vote, to propose ideas, and other ones to foster the development of certain companies and these things. So the final, the final result of this award was uh, 20, uh, 52 successful cases spread in 30, 31 countries. <coughs> So we thought that this could be a very interesting example to explore how the current governments are taking advantage or not of these sort of crowdsourcing uh, tools. So we are need now. I don't have amazing results to present because this is a, pro a, a, a work in progress project, but if you allow me to summarize that, what we are doing is trying to identify um, how these co uh, websites are promoting or not the citizen distributed problem solving. If there is a problem in the neighborhood, maybe it's not a bad idea to ask the neighbors what do they suggest to improve certain problems. So, this is the, the field of work, and those are the levels we have been talking yesterday and today about indicators. These are qualitative indicators but based on certain descriptions of architecture and flows of information, these sort of things. 1.0 sharing, 2.0 contributing, and 3.0 co-creation. Uh, so what we want to do at the very end is one, identify 
take this snapshot of the current reality of the of the e-government websites and to try to propose certain patterns of good ideas that could be at the very end of the day uh, adopted by certain governments who are happy to explore with these sort of ideas. And we think behind that there is a, 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 a very powerful idea of promoting the citizenship but rather than that promote networking between citizens for a common goal. So this is just an example. This is my last slide. This is an example, um, one of the good practices that we identify in this very approach, very first approach. As I said, there are 52 websites, but we already review like 25 or something like that. And for example, this one is one from Kong in Germany. And this is a participatory budget uh, tool. So the government suggests, uh, no, no suggests, they invite citizens to provide ideas, to vote for ideas, even for your idea or other ideas of how part of the budget could be spent. And this is interesting because it has to do with money, but also has to do with collect ideas from others. Unfortunately, as far as I see in, the, in my work in progress uh, review, most of the websites are just providing an email, and that's it, and a phone, and that's it. And you don't know who is going to answer that phone call, or who is going to reply if someone replies. So uh, it's interesting to see how this uh, wisdom of crowds, this architecture of participation is evolving very quick in certain areas of the digital world and in other areas is being very poor. And remember that uh, we are focused on those very successful cases of Europe. So I think we are going to learn a lot, a lot about that. Thank you. <coughs>